Hi, I'm Lisa. I'm one of the Newton Free Children's Librarians, and today you are joining us for Get Creative Science. So today we're going to do an experiment called Walking Water. Uh, and first we're gonna gather the materials that we need for this. First thing you're gonna need is you need three cups. The cups have to be clear, and I would recommend they're not too tall. The taller cups make it a little bit trickier. So this size cup is working, worked pretty well for me, but you want three clear cups. So I have one, two, three of them. You also are going to need water. So I have some water I poured into my measuring cup already. You could also just use it straight from the faucet if you wanted to. You'll need some paper towels and you're gonna need food coloring. So for food coloring, ask your grown up and you can have a couple choices. You need two colors, but you need two colors that are the primary colors. So our primary colors are red, yellow, and blue. Together, these three colors, the primary colors, make all the other colors that we have. So you have a couple choices. I'm today, I'm going to use blue and yellow for my experiment, um, and blue and yellow together make a green. You could also do red and yellow together, which would make an orange. Or your final choice would be red and blue together that make a purple color. So you just need two of any of this combination of red, yellow, and blue. And to get started, you need to take your paper towels first. And the first time I tried this, I learned that um, I made them too long almost for my cup size. So I'm looking at my cup here and you want about, it's gotta be less than a foot, maybe like six to eight inches of paper towel. So I'm just gonna cut this paper towel right down the middle. And then I'm gonna fold, so I have half a paper towel, and I'm gonna fold that in half the long way, so I have a skinny strip. And you're gonna do the same thing on the other piece that you cut. Fold it in half the long way, doesn't have to be perfect, and then have another skinny strip, so I have two skinny strips. The next part that you need to do is take the water that you have, and you're gonna fill up your cup a little over the halfway mark. So a little over halfway. And then do the same thing with your second cup. A little over the halfway mark. The third cup, you're going to leave with nothing. So now that we're back, we have our two cups of water. I had them on the edges that um, have water in them and my middle cup doesn't have anything in them. So now I'm gonna take the blue food coloring and I'm gonna put four to six drops in my water cup. And then I'm using a stirrer, but you could even just use a spoon to mix that color in there. You wanna make sure it's a good blue. If you have more water, you need a little bit more um, food coloring in there. Now I'm gonna take my yellow and do the same thing to the other outside cup. Here's my cup doing four to six. And yellow is a lighter color, so you might wanna go more with the six. And now I'm gonna mix that one in. Okay. So now you can see my three cups, and the cups are about two inches apart, so I'm really just using about my pinky um, to do that. Then you take your strip of paper towel and place it inside the blue cup and then curve the other end to go inside the empty cup. Now I'll repeat the same thing on the other side. So you should end up with like an M effect with your blue, your plain cup, and then your yellow cup. So now that we have our experiment set, we're gonna do our next job. And as a scientist, you make observations and you make a hypothesis or a prediction. And that means an educated guess, a guess of what you think is going to happen from the water in these two cups into the middle cup. 
So you're gonna make your prediction first. Do you think the water is really gonna uh, walk or travel into the middle cup? Um, do you think they're gonna stay where they are? Do you think the colors will change or will they stay the same between the cups? Then after you make your prediction, you're gonna go back and do an observation. So looking at my cup right away, what am I noticing? What's happening to my paper towel? Um, and what's happening to the colors and come on the other side, what's happening on the yellow one, what's happening to the colors in the paper towel. And it's only been a few minutes. So I'm going to have this and then you're going to set a timer or keep an eye on the clock in an hour, one hour, you'll come back and take a look at it again. And then you're going to record and notice what has changed. What do you see going on? Okay, so I'm coming back to check on the progress of my experiment, and this time I am noticing that I have some new water at the bottom of my middle cup. Remember, that's the cup we left empty. I'm going to come around to the side and take a look at just my blue cup, and you can see how my paper towel is wet, and the color blue is lightly seen on the paper towel, and the paper towel is wet all the way through. show you how my experiment turned out. Uh, I have my blue cup and my yellow cup and now my center cup has some green water in it. So I'm going to take this out. This is my one that had all the blue. You can see the blue in my paper towel and my one that had the yellow. You can see the yellow on my paper towel and now in the cup that was empty is green water. So due to capillary action, our water transferred from the blue and the yellow cups through the paper towels into the center cup, and then the two colors mixed to make our secondary color of green. Here's why that can happen. So gravity is the force that pushes us down. Gravity keeps us able to walk on the ground. This is why astronauts float when they are in their space stations because there is no gravity in outer space. So it would seem like if our water is traveling up, it's defying gravity. It's not doing what it's supposed to, but there's a reason why it does that. So the reason that the water can move between the two cups is something called capillary action. Big word for science, capillary action. And what that means, it is the combined forces of water molecules that mix with molecules from something else around them. So in this case, we have the water that we placed in our cups moving against the force of the paper towel fibers. So water molecules fit together, they stick together. And then as they are sticking together, they then stick to the fibers that were in our paper towels, so what our paper towels are made of. And as they're sticking, they're pulling all the other pieces of water, the molecules, and it's moving up through the paper towels. And then it is combining into the next cup. The reason that the colors change is, remember, we talked about primary colors. They make all the other colors. So our mix of that blue and that yellow together should have given you a greenish color in your center cup. So we have two different things that are coming. Hope you guys had fun. If you're looking for another experiment to try with water and water movement and food coloring, there's a couple of things you could try. You could try something similar, but put a white carnation in the water and you will see if it move up and it will change the color of your white flower on top. You could also take a piece of celery that has the stalk still on it and put the celery in one of the water cups and see if the water is able to move through the celery um, and travel up to change the color at the top of the leaves. Hope you guys had fun and that you tune in next time to our Get Creative Science videos from the Newton Free Library.